to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you very much for your gracious welcome. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. The first time I would meet Reverend Edwin was in Nairobi, Kenya. We met at a conference and he was such a wonderful experience very humble very passionate very loving man of god and from that time until now it's been from glory to glory and sir thank you very much thank you for the honor of blessing god's people and blessing a new good state again let's give him a big 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 god bless you hallelujah and then to thank our very own father and mother Bishop Ono Bogu, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. For the sake of time, we honor everyone here represented, our ministers and all who are deserving of honor. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to give us a very mighty encounter even by his word. Go ahead and pray. Speak to the Lord. The Bible declares for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone who seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Someone is praying. Give me an encounter tonight. Indeed that I will soar. Indeed that I will soar. Jesus name we pray may I may I encourage us to pay very diligent attention um, we have um, a very brief session tonight and it is my prayer that it will not just be a waste of our time in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be opened to learn I was greatly inspired by Reverend Edwin's charge before I came not because um, I was hearing what he was saying for the first time but I was assimilating once again the truthfulness of what he was saying how that there are people who can walk and faint as a result there are those who will run and even with that advantage of speed will be weary are we together there are those who can soar in fact, to add to what he has said, there is a difference between flying and soaring. Flying will still require your effort, even though you are above the ground. But soaring, you had taken advantage of the wind. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, truly the choice is yours. He said, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. It is my prayer that this will not just be one of the many conferences, but that something definite will rest upon your spirit, man. So, Father, speak to our hearts and help us tonight. We have come to encounter your wisdom. Let your word come with power. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. You are Ebenezer 
an individual who lost his father, lost his mother, and yet will defy everything that makes for mediocrity to become great. How do you explain an individual who is taken from a village and now is being celebrated across the globe, whether as a man or a woman? How do you explain individuals who in spite of their speech impediment? having a plethora of limitations and yet they still rise like the devil does not exist. How do you explain that every system of advantage does not seem to be there and while you are prophesying and predicting their doom, they are rising by an agency that you cannot even explain. I didn't raise this song just to start preaching. You see, when I'm on stage, in as much as I compose myself to minister to people, I preach from a standpoint of truthfulness. I meditate and believe the things that I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking about what God is able to do. And that, you, that I, I'm praying that you will actually believe he can do it in your life. There are certain manifestations and certain dimensions of living that it defies any kind of explanation you want to give. You see, anything plus God, anything at all plus God is equal to the result he puts there. One plus one is equal to two based on the law of logic and arithmetic. Are we together now? Yes. But anything plus God in it do not even make an attempt to predict what it can become. A failure plus God can become a sign and a wonder. A mediocre plus God can become a sign and a wonder. A stammerer plus God can become a prophet that brings people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. There is no limit to the possibilities that exist in the life of a believer in Christ. Listen, the life we've been called into is a life of tremendous advantage if and when you understand the systems that God has built to guarantee that advantage. Please listen very carefully. Just because you are saved does not guarantee that you will walk in the possibilities that this kingdom life provides. Ephesians 4.18, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and the Bible says all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I just quoted Psalm 82, my apologies, from verse 5 to 7. It says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. In Ephesians 4.18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in, in them because of the blindness of their heart. Hallelujah. The faith life, the spirit life, the kingdom life is knowledge dependent. And you see, when it has to do with acquiring the knowledge that translates into authority, there is a standard of knowledge you must attain unto. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2, the Bible says, And let him that thinketh that he knoweth anything, know that he does not know as he ought to know. That means there is a standard. You are not given the liberty to determine what you want to know just by yourself. There is a standard. That means if you must attain to this level of the anointing, this level of favor, this level of grace, there is already a preset knowledge requirement. You must rise on to that height. So just saying I know something does not give you your result. 
if we switch off the light in this room right now you can put on the little light of your phone it is light but not enough to swallow the darkness within the room so most believers have pieces of truth here and there a little knowledge about favor a little knowledge about speed a little knowledge about prayer a little knowledge about fasting and they are like tiny pieces of light and in the presence of reality they cannot do much hallelujah do you know the kind of speed that a plane do you know that every plane starts by walking then running then it runs at a speed that becomes unfair to keep running. There is a level of speed that the ground can no longer take. Then it now begins to soar. So soaring is a possibility with that plane. But it does not mean that it would decide its speed. No. The build up of the plane, already there is a speed requirement. It is a risk for the pilot to try to soar until that speed range has come in. Are we together? Now, many people try to soar, but what backs you to rise is not there. So, there are all kinds of destiny crashes like plane crashes. Very arrogant statements that cannot be defended by light and knowledge. Most of us here have flown many times. And it does not matter whether it's a Boeing, doesn't matter whether it's a, a Bombardier Challenger, doesn't matter. It is the same principle. So, when the plane starts moving, you would think it is too big and it cannot run. And then give it a little time. Once it gets to the runway, they now say, fasten your seatbelt. And it runs and runs. And the, all the pilot is doing is watching for a particular speed range. The moment it gets there, then it's ready to soar. It is a risk to try to soar in ignorance or limited knowledge. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 1, please. We're reading the first four verses. If God is speaking to us already, please say amen. amen. It says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, verse 2. It says, even as they were delivered unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. I want you to read verse 3 together. Ready? One to read. It said, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of how many things? That means there is a level of spiritual understanding. It is within the possibilities of men. To drive to a level of knowledge and intelligence with exactitude having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you that means I am writing to you from a standpoint of authority perfect understanding of all things verse 4 this is the reason that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou has been instructed i don't just want you to believe it because i am saying it he's saying i want you to believe it because the things that are taught you are not cunningly devised fables these are truths that can lift so ladies and gentlemen what you are hearing tonight and what you'll be hearing all through this conference please do not make a mistake of trivializing them or cherry picking them it is arrogance respectfully speaking it is arrogance for a student to choose what to listen for from a lecturer the student is in the class to learn whether you like what the lecturer is teaching or not you have to be able to trust that the university that employed that lecturer vetted him enough and if you do not trust the lecturer and you decide to cherry pick what you want to pick and throw the rest there will be gaps in your knowledge and those gaps will make you ineffective later on in the future. A student is not at liberty to decide what he wants to learn. He sits down and learns what he needs to learn. Hallelujah. When the oil finished, the recommendation was go to them that sell. It didn't say go to God. Go to them that sell and buy. So are you ready for tonight? Romans chapter 9. 
I'll be taking a series of teachings tonight and then we'll wrap up tomorrow. Helped by God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. 9 and 16 of Romans. Paul was mentoring the church in Rome, helping them to mature in their understanding and in the matters of the spirit. And he had this to say, So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Hallelujah. It is not, remember we, we spoke about running, and it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. Let me tell you what that means. The person who wills has done something noble because he's now in the realm of mind, the mind. He is already working on his mind, and we know the relationship between your mind and your results. He's done something commendable, but he's saying even that does not give a guarantee. And then him that run it is one who has gone a step further to take action. He said, even in the presence of that action, it does not still give you a hundred percent guarantee because there are times that your boat is right. There are times that you are in the sea. That's where you should be when you want to catch fish. There are times that your skill is intact and yet you will not catch fish. Hallelujah. At that point, you don't need fishing skills again. You need the mercy of God. We're coming there. It is not of him that willeth. Now, he is not saying you should not will. He is not saying you should not run. But he said while you engage in these activities, factor it at the back of your mind that there is a gap in the equation of greatness that only the size of God can fill. It is not all scientific. It is not all intellectual. Are we together? Run away from any man who does not have a God factor in the equation of his greatness. That is a risk there. There must be a part of your story you have to honestly admit that from here to here, I don't know what happened. I know that I prayed. There was prayer in that equation. I know that I fasted. I know that I listened. I know that he prophesied. But from this point to this point, if I am to be honest, I know that I was carried on the wings of the Spirit. Are we together? Second scripture, please. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. May this be someone's testimony. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. Just the A part. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. That means if you see me continuing, it's not just because I had the strength in myself to continue. The secret behind my continuity is that I have mastered the system of obtaining help. That means there is something God does to men to keep them moving. If you see anybody moving, the natural cause of men is that weariness should catch up with you eventually. So if you see that I'm making progress and you check the weariness factor and it's not there, I have outsourced an agency called help from God. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue to this day. It doesn't tell us from when he started, but no matter how long I am still standing. And the secret is that I have obtained help from God help from God second chronicles chapter 26 we'll read two verses and then I begin to teach verse 5 and verse 15 second chronicles chapter 26 the Bible says speaking about Uzziah it says he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God the Bible says and as long as he sought the Lord it says God made him to prosper who made him prosper so we don't just prosper the concept of self-made does not in, in, in it doesn't stand in the kingdom it says God made him like you say a woman made this cake baked this cake or cooked this God made him until God came he was not 
God made him to prosper. Now verse 15. This is how it played out. The Bible says, And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men. Are we together? To be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones without. Please, I'd like us to read the last sentence. Ready? One to read. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. So when the Bible says God made him, it is another expression of God helped him. So God makes men by helping them. The realm of God's help is the realm where he makes men. He makes men, all men, by helping them. This is very powerful. In Psalm 121, first two verses, it says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Are we together? It says, whence cometh my help? So he's talking about help and assistance here. Verse 2, my help, I don't know where yours comes from. It's a risk to speak for everybody. It says, my help. That means the Lord is not the only one who helps. But you can know who help by the side effects or otherwise. He says, when you look at my life, I will tell you my help comes. Every help has address. You can know this one came from an uncle. This one came from your intellect. My help. Not our help. My help cometh from the Lord. There you see our word again. Which made heavens and the earth it is not only heavens and the earth that god makes he can make anything the heavens and the earth is only an example of what he can make so the next time you look at a life and wonder how did you transit this way how is god doing this just know that he has had an encounter with the maker who is also called the helper please pay attention you're about to learn something very powerful so we have established the fact that we do not make progress just by intentions. As powerful as principles are, as powerful as obedience is, as powerful as complying with spiritual principles are, we have acknowledged and admitted that there is a, an equation in the rising and the excelling of any, any and every man that only God can give answers to. I know you worked hard. But what of waking up from the bed? What principle governs sleeping well and waking up? I understand that obedience can bring favor. But when you go to the... Is it not in your Bible? It says, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustained me. Write this word help down please. What does it mean to help? Ah, someone's life is changing in the name of Jesus. Listen, this conference is bringing you to a point where you thoroughly understand the systems of the kingdom as far as the rising and the excelling of men is concerned. And this teaching immediately will strangle away the possibility of walking in pride because you will know immediately, like all others will know too, that there is a side to your life that cannot be credited to effort or intelligence. A man can receive nothing except it is given. Help down please. Let's discuss that word. What does it mean to help? Whether to be helped or to help someone. The word help, H-E-L-P. I wrote a few things down and I want us to look at it very carefully. Number one, to help means to make it easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something to make it easy or to make it possible for someone to do or achieve something by offering your service or offering your resources that's what it means to help it's important that we define what help is so that you will know what is happening to you now and you will know what will follow you for the rest of your life are we together? Because 
somewhere in this teaching you are going to understand why the psalmist says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me when you <laughs> you just write this down to help means to make easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something that means the goal of help is to bring ease or to create possibilities are we together um, let me have one of the protocol please come sir please stand here watch this everyone now my one hand my right hand is holding a mic so I don't have the liberty to hold this I'm trying to lift this are we together it does not mean I cannot lift it but it, it will not be easy I need to lift it for the next 10 minutes but now I may attempt to lift it now he wants to help me watch now what is his role now his role is not to take away my responsibility. He is to provide a leverage to make it easy. Place your hand there. Now, watch this. If you are not seeing this guy and you are not seeing his hand, who will you give the credit to? You will say, how come this guy is holding this on one side? It's not even balanced. Yes, it is standing. But you did not know that there is somebody at the other side of my destiny. Listen. For many people, your life will be a mystery from this night. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The same way I gave this illustration, I just prophesied over someone's destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is only marvelous in our sight when it is the Lord's doing. If it is man's doing, it is natural to our sight. Please come again. Don't waste this revelation. Watch this. This is your spiritual life. This is your ministry. This is your finances. Ladies and gentlemen, this is you in Enugu state. Desiring to be a blessing to the nations. You are right here, but they need to see you. By your strength, you are limited. I will soar with you above the clouds father you are king over the storm and i will be still so to help does not mean to take over responsibility. Thank you, sir. To help means to make it easy. The assignment of help is to provide the leverage that brings ease and to create possibilities. There are some things that have no business happening. Please look at me. For instance, let's assume you were supposed to go through this door and a time was already allocated and after that time the door would be closed are we together but then you came late and the door was legitimately closed so it was not being unfair to you you simply did not meet the time but if someone now says there is an advantage i have either by reason of being a staff in that company or by reason of being an owner i can give you my card you swipe your card in front of that door and even though you were late it does not take away the rule that whoever comes late should not access the rule still stands it only changed for you you are helped when the rules change for you so when God is helping you you must be careful so that you do not teach people to be irresponsible you must understand that it was something unique that was done for you for instance to our late story if i come let's say it was to be shot by six and i came 6 15 and the door was shut we may be 10 there but because of one person who gave me his card if that door opens i will not tell them look you can come late and go away with it i was helped that is my advantage so when i'm in the room where those who came early they knew that i came late and they're asking what are you still doing here 
and I tell them, you use meritocracy to get into this room, but I was helped by God. Helped by God. Helped by God. There are people who would turn back in destiny and be surprised and say, you are not supposed to be here. By what means did you get here? Some trust in horses and others chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name. Listen, before you talk a man down, make sure you verify that there is no system of divine help. Then you can talk. But if for any reason that man has found a way of obtaining help from God, get ready to say sorry and say it early because it will be more painful as the days progress. When God decides to help a man, ladies and gentlemen, all you will see at the other end of that help is a sign and a wonder. You are Ebenezer, my helper. You are so the goal of help remember please do not forget this that in communicating help the goal is number one to make it easy remember the first goal of help is ease to provide ease number two the second goal of help is to provide possibilities. Things that had no business happening based on the natural cause of things. They are now manipulated by a leverage you receive. Hallelujah. In my definition, I said to make easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something by offering your service or offering your resources please do not forget we are not just playing with words that means in helping someone if you are the one who is the helper there are only two ways you can help the person in need of help number one provide your service number two provide your resources your resources there can mean your leverage can mean money can mean whatever it is It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is not of him that do business or does business. It is not just of him that preaches. It is not just of him that is sincere. It is the Lord that shows men mercy. He says, having obtained help from God, I continue. Uzziah was marvelously helped. The Bible did not just say he was helped. He was helped in an unusual, it's already a marvel that he was helped. But now the Bible says he was marvelously helped. There are three biblical ways that God helps men. We'll take a bit tonight and then we'll finish up. Please do not forget. There are three scriptural ways God helps men. Every time you cry for help, because remember the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Remember? It says that we may obtain mercy and find help. So we can we can find that we can find the grace that provides help even in times of need. Number one, the first way God helps men is by administering his mercy to men. The first biblical way. God helps a man is by making you a recipient of his mercy. You know a man that has been helped or he's been helped by, it is impossible to say you were helped by God and we do not find mercy at the corridor of your life. The mercy of God is what opens up the door to his help. The first way God visits men to help them to assist them to provide possibilities in their life he provides that resource of his mercy someone shout mercy. mercy number two the second way God helps men is by exposing them to the ministry of men the second way God helps men 
is by exposing the ones in need of help to the ministry of men. There is such a thing as the ministry of men. The third way God provides help in this kingdom is by granting you access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. These are the three biblical ways from Genesis to Revelation. Every time you find a man who has been helped by God, he was exposed to one more or all of these factors. Number one, access to the mercy of God. Number two, access to the ministry of men. Number three, access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Helped by God by being a recipient of his mercy, helped by God, by enjoying the ministry of men, helped by God, by enjoying the rich heritage of the ministry of the Spirit. Outside of these three factors, there is no possibility for man to obtain help from God. Are we together now? So that when you are saying, God help me, you know what you are asking. God help me means God show me mercy. God help me means God send a man to my life. God help me means reveal the Holy Spirit to me. You see, most believers, the reason why our Christian experience is not rich and constructive is because we say a lot of things and even pray a lot of things without understanding and definition. Are we together? Now when you go to pray and you say, Father, I obtain help. Your mind can partner with the word because you understand what you are saying. There is intelligence to your request. You already understand the dimensions of the help that can come. Help means mercy. Help means man. Help means the spirit of God. Is he not called the helper? That means... If you obtain mercy and the ministry of men and the ministry of the spirit, it's like a tripartite signature that will be signed upon your life. It will be impossible, unmistakable for anyone to doubt where your help and your lifting came from. For others, you have obtained mercy, but you have not enjoyed the ministry of men. For others, you have not enjoyed the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You do not even know him. This is the scope of my discussion with you through this conference. We are going to touch a bit on the subject of mercy. Because many people do not understand the mercy of God. I had to study the subject myself. The mercy of God. The ministry of man. And the ministry of of the spirit there are other people who have ignored the ministry of the spirit simply because he's invisible are we together and so they love the ministry of men and that is wonderful but they will not pay attention to the ministry of the holy spirit because they have not learned they have not been taught the value the value of knowing the holy spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit. It is true that God helps men. Now, let me paint for you very quickly a picture of a man who does not have help in his life. It's important. Who, how do you know a man who is without help? There has to be a way of identifying who has not been helped so that you can help the person by exposing him to the pathway that leads to that help. Is that true? Please look up. Medically, there are many illnesses you can literally look at someone and know that the person is not feeling fine. Is that true? You don't need to be a doctor. When you're a doctor or a medical professional, it adds, it, it's an added advantage because you can know. But you can, you, can, you can know that this person is not at the best state of health. There are very clear indices. Are we together? 
no joy, no peace, restlessness, abnormal body temperature, loss of appetite. Are we together? The person is probably losing weight, the inability to stand strong, and several other things, complications here and there. Let me paint for you the picture of a man who has not received help of God. Every time, please look up, every time your life becomes inexplicably difficult, every time the law of seed time and harvest does not seem to work in your life, it doesn't matter what you sow, it looks like there is no harvest. I'm not talking of money, you understand what I mean. I'm trying to paint a picture Number two, any man who does not receive the ministry of men, it looks like the system around you ignores you and ignores the value you carry and the investment of God's grace upon your life. These are very clear indices that show you that you are on your own. You are not being helped by God. One of the clearest proof of being alone and without help is confusion 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 absence of direction absence of exactitude that you seem to be under everything under the yoke of men under the yoke of spirits under the yoke of systems and structures then you know that that individual has not experienced the help of God how do you know that you have not experienced the help of God when it is listen there is no advantage in your life to turn negative things around into that which makes for joy and testimony for someone seated here I just described you or described your family or described your experience profitless labor profitless living spiritually nothing is happening financially nothing is happening destiny wise nothing is happening let me tell you the truth it is possible that you are sincere it is possible you are honest but this is not an issue of just honesty or dishonesty have you been helped by God are we together let's talk about the first way God helps men mercy May this be a revelation for someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31. Let's read together. We'll find somewhere to pray. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O Lord, and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head Deuteronomy 431 hallelujah are you ready let's read together one to read for the Lord thy God is a merciful God he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them so it gives you a very powerful information about god that god is a merciful god god is a merciful god i took out time sir to study the subject of mercy because i'd heard a lot of teachings about the mercy of god and the concept and the narrative that most believers have received in the body of Christ about the mercy of God is that the mercy of God only relates to sinners. So they look at mercy only as a tool for redemption, you know, from sin to get an individual saved. So when you mention the language of mercy, describe the mercy of God in a very, in a very unusual and a very clear manner. Have mercy upon me now. There are two things you need to understand. I hope I've not lost you. If you want to understand the mercy of God, 
there are two things you need to understand number one you need to know the nature of God without understanding the nature of God you cannot understand his mercy I have studied this myself number two you have to understand the nature of man these are the two important information that until and unless you have them the revelation of mercy may not make sense to you that something about the nature of God is what makes you have the confidence to come and obtain mercy and something about the nature of man is what will make you need mercy forever are we together there is something about the nature of man that if understood puts you perpetually in a position where you are in need of God's mercy that anytime you do not desire the mercy of God is because there is a level of ignorance in you about the nature of man the nature of God what does the Bible say about God first John chapter 4 and verse 8 the Bible says God is love please shout it people of God one more time say God is love one more time say God is love watch this the mercy of God is founded on his love that means this description about the character of God being love is what makes his administering mercy possible are we together now there is no possibility to show mercy I will define mercy for you shortly but that every time you obtain mercy from God there is something about the nature of God that makes obtaining mercy a possibility and that indefinitely provided you are in need of his mercy Reverend preach my message in the short charge that you gave sir I sat down there and I was thanking God for He's giving imagery to my message using his own life. And when he was celebrating and honoring our mother, he made a statement. He said, every time I am hungry, did you hear that? He said, when I'm hungry, I just go to mommy. Even if it is 12 midnight, take note. 12 midnight is an inconvenience. It is, it's not a time that, I mean, you don't get up and cook for someone as if, as if you're concocting a charm by 12 midnight but that is how far love can go and he said as soon as she sees him she will say swallow or rise marvelously helped this is this, are, are we together now that is the mercy of God now he did not tell us it happened only once he did not tell us it happened only two times so for you to understand why mama kept doing that, you have to study something about her nature. Why does God keep showing mercy? God, are you not tired of me? Is it that there's something about, something about my life should irritate you by now? God's consistency is based on this quality that God is love. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Men can be tired. If I help you today and you come tomorrow and you come next week and say Calvary greetings, I'll say go back, please. I'm tired of this. I can't be, I can't be giving you food every day. This is not a restaurant. I've tried. Even God knows I've made my contribution. Call another destiny. My God, someone's life is changing right now. Psalm 145 from verse 8 and 9 I'm showing you how God helps men that the first way God helps men is to make his mercy accessible the Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great mercy the psalmist is describing his knowledge of God that in my walk with God I have come to the conclusion that this God is gracious, he is compassionate, he is slow to anger, and he is rich in love, rich in mercy. So the Bible says, God is love. I can rest in that understanding. 
So when you ask why God loves me, my answer to you is that he is love. Why does God help? Why does God show mercy? He loves you to a point that he tied the mercy to the morning. Do you know what it means to tie the morning to the, me to the mercy to the morning? It means it recycles. Just because he showed it yesterday like time, he can show it today again. I, I, I have a guarantee that my next week has mercy there. There is the potential of mercy. There is, listen, there is a kind of confidence that you have when you know that the mercy of God is part of the support systems you have in your life. You no longer are intimidated by your limitations because you know that mercy is there. The nature of God, love. I told you, you need to know the nature of man. Ready? <laughs> Isaiah 51 and verse 5. There is something about man, pastor, that if man does not understand, we will never be able to obtain help. You see, the human species, the fallen man, is proud and arrogant by default. Are we together now? So there is, there is an intrinsic stubbornness that is hidden in the fallen man. And until something about you is revealed to you, you will not be able to open up to receive mercy from God. Let's see that about man. It says, Psalm 55, not Isaiah, Psalm 51, sorry. Psalm 51 verse 5, not Isaiah. In iniquity, let me quote it very quickly. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Look up please. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Before you were born, right from when you were being formed, it was not only your organs that were being formed. The very nature of sin and rebellion followed that formation too. And he said, in sin, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Look up please. Do you know what this means? That means the best of us, unassisted by the mercy of God, we do not even know what our tendencies can be. Until you know this about yourself and you admit it, it does not make receiving mercy necessary. Are we together? When you become full of yourself, I can do it. I can make it by myself on my own. Is because you do not know the person speaking. Who would have looked at a young responsible shepherd and believed that in that shepherd was a murderer? If you had looked at David, mama, that's the kind of person you would recommend for your daughter. Is that not so? A responsible gentleman who can almost die for his father's donkey. It means he can die for your daughter. And yet you do not know that in that innocent man is a murderer growing. There are many things that are hidden in us that just because it has not manifested yet, it doesn't mean it is not there. Man of God, listen to me. I know that you are a serious man of God and you are doing ministry. You have never encountered a challenge that makes your prayer life to be troubled. You still have sponsors. So you may not need the mercy of God. It takes mercy to stand. Ask anybody who has tried to fall. Not being, not falling by Satan or sin or whatever. Just the reality of life. Hallelujah. You see people take energy drink before they start marathon. The person who is not running is taking normal water and he doesn't care. And frankly, he doesn't need it because he's not going anywhere. Are we together? But the day he, he does not find a way of, of, you know, revitalizing his organ and then he tries to run a marathon, he may not even cross two or three rounds and he will die there because it takes energy and stamina. Please hear me. Look up, please. When you know this about the nature of man, you will not wait until the day your tendencies shock you and disappoint you. Way before you get to that point, you will anchor yourself on God's mercy. Are we together? You call yourself faithful, you say, me, God forbid, I will never touch anybody's money. You are only speaking relative to your reality now. Your wife has not become sick unto death. Your mother has not become sick unto death. There are many wrong things you do 
that can be done out of love, not out of evil. Hmm. Are we together? For instance, you can vow and say, God forbid me, I will never go to a harbor list. I'd rather die. You are right based on the ignorance that surrounds you. The day someone you love looks at you and says, my daughter, is this how you will watch me as your mother die? You wouldn't know when you will go to a shrine by yourself with the chicken or the goat or whatever. You will drag it by yourself. Listen. When the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked, don't let your life testify of it. Find help first. It is, am I, are you getting blessed tonight? We're discussing help. So when you see men who, are, who live in the reality of God's mercy, they are not just people who God gave mercy to. They are those who knew something about themselves. God forbid, I can't withhold anything from God. Me, how many things do you have first? We need to find out what you have to know what you can withhold and not withhold. A bank account of 5,000 naira with no responsibility, of course, you can give everything. But ask Abraham, take now thy son. It's not just thy son, thy 25 year old son that you got from waiting can i tell you the truth anytime you are tempted to believe that your stamina in the kingdom and in the faith is based on anything you have done by yourself repent quickly because there is a lesson that you are programming that you will learn that's why you see our fathers the older they get the more silent they become because they've seen too many things with their life and their conclusion is that mercy bar let it remain with me now you understand the prayer surely goodness and mercy we say it after service on your way out you don't even need it you don't like it you don't say it with passion you don't even understand it what you really want is surely breakthrough and for God's sake an open door follow me but you just say surely goodness and mercy can I tell you Blessed is the man who lives in the realm of God's mercy. Show me a man who has found a way of anchoring in God's mercy. Forget about that man. As far as life is concerned, he has cheated life. Please listen to me. I came to hand over something to you tonight that will change your life. That is why when men celebrate us, we know we don't have the liberty to say it all the time but there is something we know there is a condition that has kept the mercy of God perpetually in our lives there is something about the nature of man the Bible says in iniquity I don't know my tendencies I don't know the hatred that can come from my heart I don't know the jealousy that can come from my heart are we together I don't even know if there is a murderer standing here talking and I will not dare to be arrogant because many made that kind of mouth until they fell like a pack of cards. Haven't therefore obtained help, I continue. When you see anybody who is standing and doing exploits for the kingdom, when they clap for us, just for the sake of honor because the Bible allows it, we just say thank God. But when we go back and we're alone, this is our position. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, but your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. Listen, can I tell you? That's why I told you tonight's teaching will extract that arrogance component you will now see that when you see people who are humble it's not an issue of your personality it's a revelation there is something about the, your nature that if you understand the result of that revelation is humility humility is not an impartation there is no impartation of humility no humility is the resultant effect of a careful analysis of your life 
with God and without God and you come to the conclusion that my zone of safety is to remain perpetually in the mercy of God are we together it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth hear me there are many people who were sincere at at the time they had an accident and died, they were praying in tongues. There were many pastors who confessed the word like you did. Even at the point of killing them by bandits, they said, I will not die. And as they shot the gun, they died immediately. Is someone learning? I have seen pastors who fast more than me, pray more than me sincerely. We are talking of people who love God. Dimensions of consecration that you will not even come close to. And sometimes these people will come and say, Apostle, why is this ministry not working? I sincerely love God and I know they are not lying. If we probably were ranked spiritually, some of us would be far, far somewhere while these people are there and yet nothing seems to happen. It is that revelation that keeps you. So when men are clapping, as though you are a winner you are a winner but you know the leverage that brought you there are we together years ago there was a gentleman who prayed and fasted for 400 days 400 days six to six i wrapped up the last fasting with him man look i have seen people in my life who have stretched this spirit thing this spirit life you see I've seen people who lock themselves in dry fast for one week. I'm not talking of fasting and I'm going to break later on dry. Your eyes will not see light until it is seven days. You've heard my story, many of you who have listened to my teachings about a woman, just like um, the prophetess here. I was preaching in a PFN conference years ago in Kano. And I'm prophesying to people and here comes this woman wanting to receive prayers and she couldn't speak English she was speaking in Hausa every 15 days this mama finishes this Bible 15 days 15 days and yet she was coming to stand before me who should pray for who now for heaven's sake when I went to her prayer mountain the last time I was here, we went and we visited the prayer mountain and I saw the remarkable work that God was doing in the life of this woman of God. There are many people in this nation who do not come close. And yet I saw the humility. I said, that's it. You always see that signature. You know those who have understood the dynamics of God's help because pride is far from them it's not lack of confidence i repeat again it is a revelation everything that happens to any man on earth can happen to you while someone is messing his or her life getting pregnant without prayer somebody who loves God sincerely husband and wife crying to God and saying Lord show mercy who love people can be waiting two years three years four years no child whereas there is a baby factory somewhere either in this nation or around where people who are not even interested children just come it's as if how do you explain that These are my contemplations that brought me to a point of understanding the value of God's mercy. The mercy of God is not just for sinners. The mercy of God is for men. The longevity factor in a man's life is the mercy of God. You only last to the degree to which you have been shown mercy. Not the degree you want to last. Can I tell you, in the days that are coming, I'm not prophesying doom. It is the human nature many people will fall like a pack of cards not necessarily because they are wrong 
they have not mastered the system of obtaining mercy now you understand the prayer of blind Bartimaeus. he didn't say heal me he said thou son of david what i need is mercy i know what i, I will not need to ask for healing your healing is part of your mercy it is your the healing anointing resides within the mercy of god hallelujah the first expression of the help of god is his mercy can i tell you if there is anything you have seen that is worthy of commendation in the life of this man standing before you i tell you I'm, this is not just some preacher's talk i'm trying to preach because i'm talking in a conference no it is the mercy of god and I am aware of it. And we are not ashamed to let the world know that it is not as though we are sufficient in ourselves, sincerely. It will be a lie to tell you that we are not working in keeping with certain principles. But albeit, remember the beginning of my teaching, there are gaps in the equation of our greatness that only now you know the factor of God that fills it. Mercy. A gentleman, someone gave... A story and he said one time they were in a pastor's conference with our father in the Lord Baba Adeboe and other pastors were praying around the altar you know younger ministers father I'm tired of this level next level oh God you know they were crying God this cannot be this not what you showed me in my dream and they were praying and someone who had the privilege of lying down close to Baba Adeboe he said for more than one hour all that he was saying was mercy mercy oh God mercy that is not a sinner praying that is a wise man who knows that to lead this kind of people it takes more than intelligence it takes mercy 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 oh God ah blessed is the man I say it again who resides within the zone of God's mercy your life will be a wonder first to you and then to everybody around you why am i teaching you this because many of you tonight this is the sermon you have been waiting for for the next season in your life many of you are conscious of principles and i teach principles keep learning conscious of many other things but you have ignored the mercy of god because it looks like i'm not a sinner i fast and pray i'm serious i love god i i sow i give have you not seen people who farmed and cows came and ate their crops? The harvest came, but it didn't reach them. Is that true? It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. There are people who found mercy with God, and someone just walked up to them and said, Are you a man of God? He said, Yes. He said, Listen, from today, so 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 percent from our business we have god has just granted us grace we will bless you and sow it into your life to make your life convenient when you are teaching financial principles that man will sit down in clear ignorance admitting that it if it is based on what you are teaching now i should not be here even me i know hallelujah is someone learning I am a product of God's mercy now let me just tell you one more information about mercy and then we'll pray for tonight has God helped you what does it mean to show mercy I need to define that there are four aspects of mercy I want you to get number one mercy means a compassionate treatment to someone who is in distress mercy a compassionate treatment to someone who is in distress so when you treat someone compassionately who is in distress that is mercy number two refraining from punishing an offender is called mercy are we together so number one to treat 
someone compassionately who is in distress mercy number two to refrain from punishing an offender that means someone who deserves to be punished when you refrain from punishing that person you have shown him mercy number three the disposition to forgive or to pity or to be kind the disposition to forgive to show pity or kindness is called mercy the last is to alleviate pain and distress to provide relief this is an expression of mercy I'll take it again number one compassionate treatment of someone in distress number two to re to refrain from punishing an offender that means the punishment that is due that offender number three the disposition to forgive to pity or to be kind and then number four to alleviate pain and distress to provide relief that means look up please summarizing these four definitions gives us two dimensions of mercy number one there is mercy that translates to pardon and forgiveness there is mercy that translates to relieving pain and distress are we together now so mercy is not just forgiving an offender mercy is also providing relief for someone so if you do not need mercy as forgiveness over something you need mercy as a relief for pain or something you're going through this is very powerful please look up when I caught the revelation of the mercy of God my life changed the mercy of God I will repeat like I gave in the example to the door the mercy of God is not supposed to replace your responsibility of knowing God and walking in keeping with his principles like you would always hear me teach the mercy of God is a system of advantage that was provided that in addition to your obeying all these principles because the best of your strength will still be limited there will still be gaps somewhere the mercy of God now listen the mercy of God is only administered at the instance of brokenness I will just say that quickly as powerful as God's mercy is not everyone can become a recipient of his mercy there is a condition there is a condition that until you satisfy the mercy of God cannot speak for you that condition is called brokenness that means every time you see someone who is a rich recipient of God's mercy he has satisfied that necessary and sufficient condition of brokenness what is brokenness an acknowledgement of your inadequacy an acknowledgement of the fact that you are limited and unassisted by God you cannot meet God's standard brokenness so it is possible that many of us desire the help of God tonight you came for this conference to obtain help and God wants to release this expression of his help as his mercy but the help of God as his mercy will come to you and not be able to rest on you because it does not find brokenness someone say brokenness please shout it again brokenness this is very important all through scripture everywhere you see God communicating mercy when David killed Uriah remember the story with Uriah and Bathsheba that was what birthed Psalm 51 it was David reporting himself to God and he cried he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me that state of brokenness was what earned him the title of being called a man after God's heart not even Moses the meekest man on earth had that title of a man after God's heart are we together when you read the story of the prodigal son 
The story of the prodigal son is a classic rendition of the ministry of mercy. The Bible talks about a young man who was a younger brother and he wanted his share of possession and the Bible says he left and lived riotously. And then the Bible says when everything had depleted, he was in that state feeding with swine. And he said unto himself, he said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. Hear what he said. I will arise. Say brokenness. I will arise and I will go to my father, he said. And when I meet him, I will not just say, father, I am your son. Listen, I just did whatever with my money, but now I'm back. Better accept me. I didn't ask myself to be here. That is pride and not brokenness. Now, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in teaching believers to be confident, we have shifted it overboard and it has graduated into pride. There is a healthy line between confidence to approach him boldly and the spirit of reverence. Most people have gone overboard and they believe that God is just some senior brother somewhere who you can stand by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus and he must cough out everything you need. No. This God who calls himself your father is also God. Never forget. Brokenness. Father, I admit that by my strength and my wisdom, I cannot build this ministry. It is true I went for Bible training. It is true that I fast and pray. And I will continue because your word provides those as the template for an excelling life. I do that one because I love you. But I do that to honor the law of obedience. However, I know it is not within me to provide the kind of life I desire. Therefore, I come before you. You are the all-wise God. And God says, who is this speaking a language of brokenness? And quickly you will find the help of God. There are people who pray and based on the rules of prayer, their prayer should not be answered. There are many things based on the theology of prayer. And yet, because in the midst of all the confusion, their hearts are sincere. They can cry they don't even know who to pray for. Is it pray to? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it an angel? They can just cry and say, Lord, if you are there, please help me. And suddenly God comes. Can I tell you? Every time God finds brokenness, you are ready to entertain his presence. He will come. Many men of God depend on power, depend on grace, depend on intellect. That's why we don't have a lot of results. Listen, the person talking to you is not in ignorance. By the grace and the privilege of God, you've heard me say it. I will simply say I have obtained mercy from God. God has taken the lifetime of many people and given it to me. I know what it means to be a recipient of God's mercy. God is giving you explanation right now. It is not that Enugu cannot favor you. It is not that your spiritual life cannot rise. It is not that you cannot enter the realm of visions and dreams and prophetic encounters. It does not take God anything to give your ministry global visibility. It does not take God anything. Do you know, let me tell you, one of the ways that you really know that people have been helped by God is when you come close to them, you become disappointed because you will look for that wow factor. And you will not really find it. So what exactly about you is really responsible for the results? And the people will tell you, this is me. This is all of me you are seeing. Years ago, when we used to travel, when I traveled with the protocol department, I, it's not now that I dress wearing all this. I used to wear a jean and my polo and my earpiece, my palm sandals so that my leg does not swell. And when we travel for meetings, sometimes the protocol people can be waiting, sometimes even waiting, you know, at the base for hours, waiting for this Apostle Joshua Selman. And as soon as we come out from the airplane, they are looking for him. They can go to my protocol because they seem to be more dressed and they find out he's not the one. And then they see this guy on jean, polo, my small phone. I didn't even used to use all these gadgets. I used to use my small e72 uh, or so and sometimes i watch the shock on their faces including the host 
we prayed, we fasted, and all those who recommended me in the church will stand guilty. We, 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 it's not our fault. But at the end of the same meeting, you will know the difference between the vessel and the treasure. You see that? We make our boast in the Lord because we know that outside of him, we, we are not very much. Let me tell you the truth. It's not some condemnation. It's the truth. Whether you live in denial, one day life will force you to agree on this thing I'm saying. Outside of God, add us up. We don't amount to so much. The weight factor in us is his glory and his grace. This is why when we stand before the world, we point them to Jesus, the one who has helped us and shown us mercy. That is why we carry the cross and we stand proudly behind it. And when people look at us as though we are some superstars, on one hand, we appreciate the sincerity of your commendation, but we are quick to let them know that, listen to me, if it is this man just by intellect and human connection and utterance and whatever it is, we don't add too much. But because he has come to us, and let me tell you sincerely, what he found that brought him was brokenness. For someone, this is your message this night. You are too proud to receive help from God. You are still leaning and trusting on everything. After all, I was in someone else's business. And when I was helping him as an apprentice, I made him a billionaire. Now that I have my own business, I should be a billionaire. And you are still scrounging around. Because it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth but of the Lord that showeth mercy 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 someone can be so competent and excellent and yet his destiny helpers are never around and then the day he's not around the weak alternative to him just comes around and that day that is the day that the person who needs the contract wants to give out a contract of over one billion the person who they would have given is not around and since you are there they say can you do it and they give you and by the time people are saying what did you do sometimes you stand and you say listen even that contract it was not me who did it it was too big i had to call someone to come and do it and yet the credit comes to you and you are so blessed. Listen, what I'm teaching you is so powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you understand what it is I'm teaching you, your life will remain an unending wonder. I stand before God every time when I'm alone, especially when I return from meetings like this. Mighty, marvelous miracles, transformations by the Spirit of God. And you know, my phone is full of text messages. People saying all kinds of things. Apostle, you are this and that. And I know they are sincere. There is a place for honor. But then I stand and I look at this gentleman and I say, young man, listen carefully. There are no self-made people in this kingdom. When they look at you, what they see is the mercy of God. It's just that they do not know that it is called the mercy of God. So they call it any other thing. But I'm telling you the name now. Are we together? Any man across the globe who is doing mighty things for the kingdom in ministry, in business, if it is the God of the Bible who helped them, the first expression of the help they received was mercy. Mercy. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was not fasting. I was not praying. I fast. I pray. But at that point, I, was, I didn't even ask him to come. I was lying down and he came. How do you explain that? Whereas there are other people saying, God, I will kill myself if you don't come. He still did not come. Are we together? And he comes to you. It was an honor already for me to see him. And then he stretches his hands towards me and blesses me and does all the things that happen and look at my life today who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne don't sing just listen to me 
Who is like you, the lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? I will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. For someone at the end of this service, by tomorrow morning, you will return back and stand and say, it's a lie. What happened? I have heard that God lifts, but now I am the life that he has lifted. I have heard that God anoints. You're a man of God here. That by the next meeting you go to, you will it will it will be as if you held a charm. The grace of God and the investment of his power upon your life. Listen, I will give up anything in this life to remain in the mercy of God. I don't trust myself outside of the mercy of God. I don't even know what my tendencies are outside the mercy of God. My safety zone is the mercy of God. If you ever ask me, what is the secret behind your life, apostle? I will tell you, an ordinary man helped by God. It's not a cliche. It is, it is the definition of my life helped by God we're going to find somewhere to pray come again my friend this is your life we're going to act that example again you need to rise in ministry you need greater grace you come from a family where your grandfather already killed a lot of people and based on the cause that was released legitimately, you have come as the offspring. Uh, it's none of my business. That's not the business of the realm of the spirit too. It's a law. When they were dying, they made pronouncements and said, none of your daughters will see joy because you took away my own joy. Now you have shown, you came, you showed up from that family. And you just laugh and say everything is alright, it's gone. And you are seeing the mark following you. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat. Listen. For as long as you are still complaining and giving excuses, it's unfair. I'm a beautiful lady. People are not seeing me. Find out what is covering your eyes. It will take mercy, not complaining. I'm a graduate. I even have PhD. And you will see someone who said, I was at the gate with ordinary school certificate. And someone said, I like your face. What do you do? Say, sir, don't harass me. Say, I'm leaving Nigeria. Can you be the African representative of my company? How do you explain that? Someone shout mercy. And you could shout mercy. So that when other people are saying my skill brought me here, when other people are saying my father's connection brought me here, it now gets to your turn and say, why are you here among the great? How did you get here? Because by your background, you should not be here. How did you get here? Everything you are doing, somebody is doing too. Yet they are not getting your results. The, the factor is mercy. Shout mercy. Man of God, shout mercy. Businessman, shout mercy. Thank you. You would think that will annoy them and they will leave the church. By next week, they, they are back again. I will tell you what he is doing behind the scene that you are not seeing. When he goes back home, Happy you see, we declare your majesty. Happy you 
person will kneel before God and say father I didn't have the privilege to go to school it's not laziness I am improving myself now you simply sent me to bring life and bring transformation and you promised me you will go with me are you John so 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 and so yes the Lord said somewhere in Enugu state here that you are going to build him a church see are you not surprised that it's ordinary people who are making things happen is that not a message enough for you? I don't downplay competence. Let me repeat it again. I don't downplay adherence to principles. There are principles in life. I am a teacher of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. But let me tell you sincerely, when all is said and done, this is it. You have tried your best. Here he comes. No, it's only because you were lucky. It's the cloth you wore, that's why you could lift it. Next week, you are still lifting it again. After 10 years, you are still lifting it again. Because the helper remains with you. I know after 5 years, you will not last. Oh dear, what a joke. Once the helper is with you, you will keep rising. They were just lucky to be blessed. I'm sure that that, that, that car, it will not last. Another one will not come. But the helper comes again. I'm sure that ministry is just because the church is around his village people. No, sir. The only explanation to the mysterious continuity of great men is the help of God that has come as mercy. Listen, we're wrapping up. I wish I had the time to share my testimonies and tell you my stories. You will think I'm lying and you will think I'm exaggerating. And sometimes because sadly the body of Christ can misunderstand when you say some of these things, they take it for pride. But I live perpetually in awe of what the mercy of God can do. Believe me when I tell you, if you ever are looking for one person who is a recipient of God's mercy, it is this man standing before you. I have seen God do things in my life that you can almost tap yourself and say, wake up. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Listen. The Lord is calling you tonight. In addition to your prayer, your fasting, your word life, your consecration, powerful kingdom principles to never compromise on. You want to soar? The energy that lifts the plane does not come from the plane. The energy that lifts the plane is already programmed in nature. So when you see the plane rising, that weight cannot rise like that. If the plane could rise on its own, it will rise like a bed without speed. It needed to tap into the law. Some of you, you have been walking. Then you've tried running. You have not gotten to that speed. Let his hand lift you. And all of a sudden, you will see yourself soaring in realms. Realms and dimensions of the grace of God. You will marvel and you will wonder. You will lay up gold as dust. God will honor you and bless you. Recently, a, an international body, it's a global body, I return home and I get this letter and they write this letter that they want to give me an award and I'm looking at it and saying, award? How does this, in, of course, it may not be unusual that they've heard about me, but what in the world is this? An award by this body I know the kinds of people who receive awards from that body and I just went back I said God what is this what is this what is this 
that you can sit down in worship and in awe and God will take someone else's prayer point and bring it for you as a gift and say take this is it I live a life of worship and awe because I thank God for showing me his mercy my life would have been miserable every time you think we are some kind of extra extraordinary people on one hand there are sacrifices that have been made I will tell you that in truth on one hand he has obtained grace to walk in keeping with certain principles but the other side of it please don't ask me it is the hand of God and his mercy for me it is not a recitation after service surely goodness and mercy these two spirits have stayed with me I know what it means to see the goodness of God I know what it means to see the mercy of God my assignment tonight is to prophesy over your life there is a dimension of mercy you must enter into this night are we together yes for when that happens you will watch your life and you will know the difference for some of you the moment the mercy of God steps in you will not even spend one month in this country believe me all of a sudden doors will open for you there are pastors listen by the time the mercy of God rests upon your altar people will come and meet you and say tell the truth I don't know you are someone who does uh, uh, what they call it now herbal medicine or, 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 or bury something under your what did you do because I know you and you will tell them listen I came from the SOA conference and while I was seated quietly a man of God casually talked about this mercy factor the mercy of God where do I get finance to run ministry it is mercy oh. it is mercy you can cry and call people to sow and all the millionaires will be watching you as if they didn't hear we are talking about the kingdom here. They say, wow. Well, yeah. Pray and they will pray. Give and they will walk away. And they will walk right to someone else and say, can I have the privilege of giving you 10, 10 million every month? Mercy. There are some of you, you already have what it takes for the world to celebrate you. In all fairness, you have worked on yourself ministerially, academically, business-wise. In all fairness, you have worked on yourself, but the mercy of God has not yet rested upon you. That's why you can remain and sweep the ground and watch ordinary people as though they were holding a charm. It is the mercy of God. When it is time to pray, I have a few more minutes with you. I want you to humble yourself tonight and pray and cry for mercy and say, Father, I know. I know that without you, without you, I can do nothing. Without you, there's no life to me. So I need you in my life today. Hallelujah. One day, I was preparing, just worshiping the Lord and resting. And then I get this text that a group of some business people want to see me and they came and they said, we're real estate people and we entered a covenant with God that anywhere in the world we build our estate we must build a house for you till Jesus comes I don't want to tell you how many estates they have built across the globe today and some of those houses have never gone to even go and see it there are keys to houses today that have not even gone to see myself I'm not saying this to brag are we together? Sometimes it's good to challenge people. 
product of God's mercy. Product of God's mercy. There was a time within the period of two or three weeks, God brought 18 cars. What do you do with them? Will you put your leg in one and put your head in another one? What kind of thing is that? How many houses can you live in? Even if you travel to every nation. See, it is what you have that you give. You can't give what... There's something you are going to receive this night. I'm not wasting your time. Please, don't be distracted. There is something that must come upon your life tonight. Because the favor of God is the child of his mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Is that in your Bible? For the time to favor her, yea, the set time. that mobilization was in one month no poster no nothing coming to Jesus how do you explain this I'm not saying this to brag I hope you you, you don't misunderstand it that God will grant you access to kings and nobles access to their heart and you're wondering and saying what is this I'm not saying this to waste your time. I'm saying it because it must work in your life from this night. That you will return back and as some of you on your way going home, you will start seeing a strange call. And all that you'll be hearing in your spirit is mercy. Mercy. And you pick the call and someone will say, where are you? I was in prayer and fasting and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Are you John? Are you Ebuka? Are you this person? Please come see me in my office. Come with two or any two people you want to get a job. And they now come there and you are wondering. They just give them a job just like that. There are some of you by the mercy of God. You are going to step into prepared blessings. Dimensions of blessings that have been prepared for you. I'm saying this to you by the spirit of God. Hear me. There are some of you in ministry. The level of grace and the hand of God you will begin to see in your life will surprise you. Prophetic encounters, supernatural visitations by the Spirit of God. There is no limit to what the mercy of God can do in the life of a man. Because, you know, since COVID, many people's lives, churches, ministries, families have gone down, even economically. Let me tell you the truth. It will take God's mercy to go down. When you have lost 1 billion or 100 million in your investment or in your business, what kind of technology are you going to use to gain it back? No. To take the mercy of God. I don't know how it works for others, but I can tell you how it works for me. Grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace. Please stand. Your grace. Your grace. I'm nothing without you. Your grace. Now hear me, I have 10 more minutes with us and we're done. Out of that 10 minutes, we're going to take the next 2 minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before God. I'm going to leave you for the next 2 minutes. Lord, I acknowledge you as the only one exclusively with the power to lift me. 
and the power to help me and i cry like bind Bartimeu, thou son of david have mercy on me someone pray i don't know how you will cry before god oh but i leave you with god your maker for the next two minutes and that includes those following online god is able to help you and to raise you by his mercy having obtained help from god i continue to this day go ahead and pray mercy mercy shalike parakos kadebrendege balakatosiata you are a man of God in ministry, cry for mercy. You are a businessman, cry for mercy. You are a prophet that wants to be used mightily by God, cry for mercy. An apostle, a teacher of the word, cry for mercy. Believe me that outside of the mercy of God, there is not much you can do. This is true. You are crying to your God and your maker. Please pray. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me your glory revealed through me your wisdom be found in me your favor rests on me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what you have prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ form in me. Listen to me. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, in as much as they are called by my name, the first thing is that they must humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land the next time you say Lord I need your help what you are saying is keep me in the zone of your mercy mercy now you know it is not an immature spiritual prayer when you go to the place of prayer and you roll from left to right crying and say show me mercy show me mercy 
it was that brokenness that God found in the young boy Solomon that made him to receive such a rich investment of wisdom. When Solomon was asked, what do I give you? He didn't just say, give me an understanding heart. He said, Lord, I am young and you have given me such a great people. Who is able to lead these people? He confessed his ignorance and his limitation. If there is something I know about God, I don't know everything about God, but there are a few things I know about God. One of it is that the presence of God is attracted and sustained by the cry of brokenness. Not the accuracy in prayer. Not the degree of compliance to the word alone. The presence of God is attracted and sustained by the voice of brokenness. Show me a man and a vessel that is and remains ever broken. You have found a way of trapping God's presence to your domain eternally. Let this mind be in you, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. It says that even though he was God, he did not consider it a robbery, right? That he had that equality, yet he humbled himself. He submitted himself and died even the death on the cross. He says, wherefore, by reason of assuming that posture in the spirit and even physically, God had so highly exalted him and placed him upon him an office that is greater than every other office. He says that whoever invokes the authority that comes with that office, you see that? Whether of things in heaven, of things in the earth or under the earth, every tongue, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father. I am telling you now that in the kingdom and in the life that we live in the spirit, our advantage and our edge is maintaining that posture of brokenness. Whether you are Jacob or Gideon or David or Solomon or even Jesus, it does not matter who you are. If it is the God of the Bible, you want to secure his presence and his help, you must perpetually remain in the place of brokenness, crying for his mercy, because one genuine encounter with God's mercy can rewrite your life, rewrite your destiny. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. Some of you, your spiritual fire has gone down. Some of you, your passion for spiritual things has gone down. Your prayer life is almost zero. Nothing to write home about. You may even be a man of God. Just because you are preaching does not mean your prayer life and your word life is alive. You are the one who knows your stay with God. Some of you right now, based on the assessment of your non-compliance to kingdom principles, you do not deserve certain levels of the hand of God. But the mercy of God is about to speak for you. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. We call upon the helper of men and the merciful God. May he show you mercy tonight. Mercy over your spiritual life. Mercy over your family. Mercy over your finances. Yes. Mercy over your ministry. Yes. Mercy over your health. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I pray that by reason of the blood and that which happened in Calvary, may mercy speak for you. Yes. The same mercy speaks against every altar and every manifestation of darkness over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I speak prophetically over your life by reason of the mercy of God rise to heights unimagined I open doors of opportunity for you by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ hear me the one who comes to make your walk with God easy 
the one who comes to make your life possible in the name of Jesus he who died and rose again I call for his ministry in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to leave this place return home with this revelation protect it and guard it teach everyone you know and let them know that you have found a very powerful key so when they look at you and say man of God you are such an anointed man appreciate them sincerely but tell them hold on don't go yet let me tell you something that except for and except by the mercy of God even in the midst of this plenty we do not amount to much add it to their understanding that above and beyond the spiritual paraphernalia is the mercy of God that backs you you are a businessman and God continues to increase and multiply you when people come to you and say what are you doing be honest with them show them the place of diligence show them the place of compliance with kingdom laws and when you are done and they're about to go and say thank you say hold on don't be in a rush come back there is a dimension I need to teach you the spirit life is not complete with man's effort alone there is the help of God that grants men the strength even to continue you are a man of God and God is doing much through you in this city in the east of the Niger and around when people applaud you receive it with joy and sincerity but please I beseech you do well to let them know truthfully so that beyond what you saw that you clapped for there is the one you have not seen and in one word it is called the help of God I am a product of the help of God you say that way your mentorship and your counsel to them will be complete so you have left them responsible believers understanding the precepts of the kingdom and the spirit that they should walk and live by but then in addition you leave them with that understanding that if your strength resides only in the consciousness of your prayer life and your word life and just your obedience and all of these things the life of Peter in John 21 was a lesson for us Peter was a fisherman professionally P Peter had a boat that was working he had a net that was working he was by the sea where fish should be yet strangely he did not catch fish there are times that everything is right yet you will still not have results God does that in everybody's life once in a while so that he will remind you there are times that God himself will stop the results from happening so that you are surprised then he says no it's not that this thing should not work I stopped it only to bring to your awareness that there is still another dimension the help of God because when your strength continues to lift you sometimes you can forget it's a weakness in men it has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a weakness in men I know if I go for the meeting people will be healed and blessed I know I glory be to God but you don't mean it and they laugh and say he has come again mighty man of God so there are times God will draw your ears and because we are usually very stubborn and we don't pay attention the only way he helps us to turn is to withdraw results every time God withdraw results men will turn to him and he will say it was not about the results I wanted your attention remember that I am still there may the Lord bless you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus now please hear me tomorrow I want to encourage everyone in as much as I, I hope I've obtained permission can I invite everyone to come sir because I want to share something that is very powerful you need to understand the spirit life listen carefully don't think it's just a leaders meeting just to come and teach administration and the rest there is something about the spirit life that if you do not understand in this end time you will not be able to stand are we together yes he said those who walk not by the flesh but by the spirit you need to know how to on you need to understand the dynamics of the spirit life throughout tomorrow our teaching will center around that I will be showing you a few things and I trust that someone will be receiving an impartation that will really transform your life so tomorrow in the morning 
8 o'clock, I'm to what? 9 o'clock, it starts. And then the evening session. Please invite everybody you know in Enugu, including those who need to connect online, and tell them that God is helping them. May I also request that as you return home, please try to listen to this message again. Search for it. The church social media platform is there. Listen to it and pray with it. The Lord bless you. I decree and declare that your return home is safe. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Because of that which you have received tonight, let the mercy of God begin to speak instantly. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.